Welcome to the Velvet Door, where beyond the door, we talk about all things that are worthy. And of course, I am your host, SJ. And I want to talk about this Dr. Umar segment where he was uh, in, a, in a panel discussion and he talked about Black women in their, in, in their femininity. And as you guys should know, that this is one of the topics that I'm very passionate about as a woman myself who is on her road to recovering her femininity as well. And in the video, he pretty much talks about, well, you know what? Let me let me go ahead and let y'all just hear it. In support of that, one of the things I see being in mental health is I'm starting to see more black women than ever before beginning to succumb to the stress of living up to everyone's expectations, both domestically, politically, and socially. I've seen more black women over the past five years have nervous breakdowns than I've seen at any other point in my professional history. And I'm saying that to say that black women have to reclaim their femininity. They have to reclaim their vulnerability. They have to stop allowing others to victimize them with the strong black women narrative, which has become dangerous emotionally and dangerous psychologically because there's a lot of black women who crave help, who need help, but who are not comfortable seeking mental health assistance because they've been raised to believe that they can never be vulnerable. All right, so you guys heard that. Dr. Umar, basically, he just backs up the claims that we as women have always been saying that we have the burden of carrying on the community. We have the burden of being the voices for all the injustices. We have the burden of being in the front lines on the protest. We have the burden of bearing the children and even staying after the children are in the world. So we, we have all these burdens that are placed upon us, things that should have been, I would say, um, blessings things that should have just been our our own um signing up to feel like we are being a part of something but on our own accord not because that we have to but because we want to we want to be beside our men doing this it has now turned into where if we don't do it sometimes it just doesn't it doesn't get done so let's expound on this because I feel like when black women have these concerns that we are kind of pushed out, shunned away, and people will bring up talking points from the 1960s and 1970s and say, well, you guys went ahead and got on welfare. You pushed the man out the house and you had to do this. But I don't think they really give context to why a lot of these women were going this route. And I don't, don't, think, don't think those same women give context to why those men will put in positions where they can't provide but that's for another topic for another day we're going to just stick on a topic of your femininity now even back in the days where you had now even back in the days where you had slavery when you had um you know when you had your freed black men and black women you still had a time period where women had to still take on the load. Women still had to work X and of hours, whether they were housekeepers, whether they were nannies, whether they were uh, seamstress working for other wealthy white families, and they still had to come home and rear their own children. A lot was not put on the father. It was always the mother and always has been the mother. And I think that is a conditioning that we've had for over a couple centuries now. So now we are in a place where we are in a constant battle of being feminine and being masculine. We can now see how over the years this has came about. Now we're talking about pre-welfare. This is, this is before all that happened, okay? Our femininity was already out the door. When you are having to put yourself in a position to always, always fight for survival, you're fighting for your kid's survival, you, you don't necessarily always have the time to be feminine. You don't have the time to just say, I'm tired, to say, I need a break. And if you say that back then, even back in those days, they'll look at you like you're weak. You're a weak woman. You don't deserve to have a husband. Your husband deserves a better wife who could work harder. But yeah, on the flip side in other cultures, 
once you are married, that is when you are coming into your peak femininity, okay? That is when you are resting in your peak essence of what it means to be a mother and what it means to be a woman. And you're able to have the easiest job pretty much on earth, okay? So it, it's, just, it's just kind of funny how, as Dr. Umar has said, you can be from other cultures and other races, and we have saw that these women are able to say, I need a break. They're able to say that I, you know what, I can't do it all. And I don't want to do it all. I'm not supposed to do it all. And I'm going to have a stepfather. How many times have we seen women, especially of other races, especially white women, have gotten married three or four times? You know, they have a stepfather after stepfather after stepfather. And that's okay. It's not looked at sideways because as long as you're getting married, it's okay. Now, if for a black woman to do the same thing, it's a little harder. It's a little harder to drag out that commitment that many times from a man. So it's just showing you that even our counterparts, even our black men understand that we have been taken away from our own femininity. All right. And like I said, we can go into depth of why this has happened. This is this is prior to just welfare in the drug ap epidemic this is prior to that since we were little girls we were molded to always make sure that we have our own we were molded that if a, another little girl didn't have her own we made fun of her for not having oh you don't have your own lunch oh why you asking that boy for lunch you can't get your own we've been doing that since we were little girls we've been trying to stunt on other little girls to prove that we got it since we were young. And even though we all are in the same predicament, we all we are coming from the hood. But we, we all have this idea that I got to still have it more than you because this is how I'm going to impress him. Another guy, another boy. Now, while we're in the mix of doing all this, we're taking on a very masculine approach of what it means to attract men. Hence why you start attracting your hyper-masculine men. If you're already a masculine woman, you're only going to attract another masculine man, but he can't be at the same level as you. So he has to be hyper-masculine. And as I said before, hyper-masculinity leads to toxicity, okay? That's not what you want, but that's what we have. Too many Black women have had this idea that they can do it on their own. Too many black women have this idea that they don't, they don't have to ask for help. Too many black women are boasting and proud that, yeah, I, I raised my kids by myself. I didn't need anyone help me. And, and if a woman says that, she'll look at you and say, well, you're weak. You don't know how to get up and get it on your own. You don't know how to hustle and take care of your kids on your own. No, I don't have to. Nor do I want to. Right? So we, we're always in this constant battle, even within our own circles of women. When you have one side of women that's saying, you know what, I'm okay with understanding that, listen, I need a man in this house. Oh, you know what, before I even start to have kids, I need a man to provide for me. And then you have the other side of black women who are telling you that, listen, forget him, go down there, get your stamps, go get on that waiting list, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Go get you a job. Make sure you're working about 50 hours a week. Get your overtime. Take care of your kids. You know what I'm saying? If you got to put them in daycare and after daycare, then you got to do what you got to do. You know, don't get me wrong. This is great advice when a woman has her back against the wall, though. This should never be a woman's first choice. Her first choice should never have to be that she has to fend for her survival. Because you had all the time to plan to have the proper mate in place. Right? So Dr. Umar is shedding a light. And I know some people have their feelings about Dr. Umar. They don't like him and they think he's a scammer. You know, whatever whatever your opinions are, that's, that's your opinions. And I'm not here to argue on those opinions, you know? <laughs> but I am here to basically co-sign the message that he is putting out there because we need more black men to understand 
where our lack of femininity come from. Not just point the finger at us and tell us that we're masculine. Not just point the finger at us and blame everything wrong with the black community on us. You cannot blame women for the outcome of communities when men are the builders. Men are the ones supposed to be building foundations. Despite who puts you in what position, it is still your responsibility as men to make sure that your woman and your child is at a safe place. Now, imagine if every man had that mindset, you wouldn't have a, dis a dismantled black community. If every man had the idea that every woman they impregnated, every woman that they were with, they were going to make sure that they're in a, in a great environment, kids are taken care of, everything is good. You wouldn't have the issues that we're having today because that means every family and every community will be able to stand up and take care of their own and protect their own. What I find, you know, and also what I find interesting about this whole independent narrative that us Black women have continued to carry on for decades is that we look up to celebrities like a Beyonce and like a, a Cardi B and we said that these are the images of what it means to be independent women because they make songs for the woman that's supposed to be independent like us, right? But the, the reality is that these celebrities go home to their husbands. These celebrities don't let their husbands go. Don't let the press and the, and the media make it seem like they're willing to walk away from their powerful and rich husbands. And even if these men weren't rich, I, I will always stand by the fact that I believe that these women would still fight for their relationships because that's just in them. And that's what they grew up seeing. So while the, everyone is basically pushing a lie to black women and telling them that they have to be a certain type of way, they have to be more independent, they have to do it on their own, they're going back home to their husbands. All these feminists that come out here and march, they're marching and they're telling you and they're co-signing that, yeah, black women, black men are not this and black men are not doing this for you. And you guys should continue to march with us for our feminine rights. And as women, we need our rights. And those women go back home to their husbands. You see, you guys were going back home to nothing. You're going back home to your kids, if you had kids in an uh, uh, empty apartment or empty house. Meanwhile, Becky and, 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 and Mary Lynn and them, they're going back home to Brad and, and Timmy and, and John, okay? So you got to get out the facade and step out of yourself. We know there's a lot of frustrations because the frustration, it comes from, it comes from the whole system of society itself, okay? It's not, it's not really a narrowed in situation. And you can't just pinpoint it in this one area and say, well, this is the reason why. And if we stop this, it will make everything better. It's not true. When it's a whole system, it's systematic. Okay, guys? So let's stop being the ones that basically we egg on our own demise as women. And then as, by the time you get about your late 30s and 40s, you're already burnt out. And now if you can't find the reason of why you're burnt out, then you result to just all men ain't ish. All men are this, all men are that, all men are this. You result to the same talking points. All you doing is polluting the next generation of women to think like you and to end up like you. All right? So we have to stop, we have to stop this and take, take some accountability. Once again, Black women, we have been robbed of our fe femininity for centuries. This is not something that just started. The seeds were planted centuries ago, okay? Centuries ago. We were robbed of that. And then we were told we weren't allowed to have that unless America sees us as sex symbols. I actually saw a, a Black history fact and I couldn't believe that this was a fact. And the Black History fact, fact said that this particular woman was the first recognized Black American, or they would say African American sex symbol. And that was really a Black History fact. Think about that. A sex symbol. A woman that the entire world can have sex with. It's the, the woman that the Thai world can treat as a piece of meat is a black history fact because she was now acknowledged to be acceptable 
by white media. Think about this. Today, we would embrace that same title. And we would say, oh, that, that's, that's the definition of what it means to be independent. Because we see our Mega Stylings and our Cardi B's and all these other, all these other so-called black women who are leading with their sexuality and we think that's what femininity is, but it's not. It's not. We think that's what independence is and it's not. Okay. So there's a, there's a lot of healing we have to do within ourselves to start defining and understanding how individually we all have to take our own route to find where our femininity lies and we have to restore it. We can we cannot wait on men to do it. Men have their own battle within themselves they have to continue to work on. Okay. Black women, it's time. If you got the balls to, to go ahead and raise three, four kids by yourself, you're gonna have the balls to go ahead and restore that femininity too. It's inner working. I, I told you guys this all the time. It's inner working, inner peace. Is the only way you're gonna be able to exert femininity you can't have all this anger inside of you and think that you can cover it up with makeup and weave it can't happen it's not going to happen you can't cover it up with some 34 you know 34 double d's and a big butt it's not gonna happen doesn't matter what you try to put on top of it you still got inner work that you have to do So once again, black women, the state of femininity is in your hands today. That you no longer can say that you didn't know. No, you do know. And at this point, you're doing, you're doing what you're told. You don't do what you're told in any other aspect. Some, some ladies, they can't do what they're told if a man asks them to do something, they're like, I ain't listening to him. Their mama asks them to do something, I ain't listening to her. I'm a grown woman. I ain't got to listen to her. Okay, well, you ain't got to listen to nobody, but can you listen to yourself? Yourself understands what you're lacking. So once again, Dr. Umar is right on the money. Society has robbed us of our femininity. Okay? Society has told us that we should be strong and we should be on the front lines at all times. We have to fight. While we should be at home with our children, protecting our children in case something happens to them, while the men are on the front lines, we on the front lines and leaving our kids with God knows who. While we fight for causes that will really eventually turn our backs, turn their backs on us. Okay? I don't care that a black woman created these causes, especially BLM and things of that nature. They're not for you. Black women creating causes that are not for them. Oh, that's that's nothing new. What's for you now? What are you gonna do for you? So I want to hear you guys' opinions down below. Let me know. Do you do you agree with Dr. Umar? Do you believe he has a point? And um, also, let me hear about how you have rejected the road the road that you had to take to be a feminine woman. Let's 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 be more honest about this, you know, and I'm coming at it from a point of having having the motivation to do it, you know, knowing how to do it, because when you when you take that extra step, you are taking the step to be vulnerable, understanding that you have flaws and you're not strong. Everyone has their breaking point. Don't let your breaking point be in a casket. Don't let your breaking point be at the whims of someone else's hands. Don't let your breaking point be that your whole entire livelihood is in the hands of the government. Okay. So go ahead and like the video, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. I wanna hear you guys' opinions on this. Once again, get down below in the comment section and let's discuss what's going on. And of course, this is The Velvet Door. Beyond the door, we talk about all things that are worthy. And I'm your host, SJ, and I will see you on the next video.